So most of these pediatric white matter disorders are genetic. These are diverse group which are caused by mutation in various genes. Some of which we have understood, some of which we have not yet understood. But what it does is it leads to lack of either normal biochemicals in the brain or accumulation of abnormal biochemicals in the brain. It further leads to because of bad biochemical or lack of normal biochemical, it leads to brain injury and hence patient has various signs and symptoms. Because there are 50 conditions and presenting symptoms are non-specific in most cases, imaging allows the pediatrician or pediatric neurologist to narrow the differential diagnosis. Because if the patient has to undergo battery of genetic tests, it can cost up to 3 lakhs rupees. So our job is to understand the pattern and give least possible differential diagnosis. So we can reduce the cost of the genetic test and you can quickly come to a specific diagnosis. Pediatric white matter disorders have three classifications, genetic, pathological and radiological. Radiological is of course most important to us, but before we look at them, we must understand what is the genetic and pathological classification. So genetic classification divides pediatric white matter disorders into well-defined leukoencephalopathies and undefined leukoencephalopathies. Undefined are not yet understood. Well-defined ones are further divided into hypomyelination, dysmyelination, leukodystrophies, cystic degeneration of myelin, which can be without myelin destruction and with myelin destruction and axonal damage. Hypomyelination is primary disturbance in myelin formation or failure of myelination secondary to neuron or astrocyte dysfunction. Dysmyelination is delayed or disturbed myelination. Leukodystrophy is progressive D or dysmyelination. So this is a worse condition of this subpart. Cystic degeneration of myelin or myelin splitting is further subdivided into conditions which cause myelin loss and conditions which do not cause myelin loss. Axonal damage are disorders of axonal structure or organization or both. So this is genetic classification and subtypes of each one are as follows. So hypomyelination is associated with Pelagius Merzbacher disease, Cocaine syndrome, Tay-Sachs disease, Salas disease, GM1 and 2 gangliosidosis and infantile neuronal steroid lipofuscinosis. This myelination is seen in most of the amino acidopathies and organic acidurias and it is also seen with deletion of 18q chromosome. Leukodystrophy is seen in adrenal leukodystrophy, Zellweger syndrome, Crabbe's disease and metachromatic leukodystrophy. Cystic degeneration of myelin or myelin splitting can be with myelin loss or without myelin loss. Myelin loss is seen in canavans, mitochondrial disorders and L2 hydroxyglutaric aciduria. Without myelin loss, cystic degeneration can my, of myelin can happen in what is called as Agrawal syndrome, Vandenoff disease or megaloencephalic leukodystrophy with subcortical cysts. Axonal damage is associated with giant axonal neuropathies and there are several unclassified ones as yet and these are Alexander's, 
vanishing white matter disorders, congenital muscular dystrophies which have five subtypes, Jogren Larsen syndrome, cerebral tenderness xanthomatosis and leukodystrophy with pylol metabolism abnormality. Pathological classification of genetic white matter disorders in children is based on which organelle in the brain cell gets damaged or is faulty. So fault in lysosomes is associated with metachromatic leukodystrophy, crabase, mycopolysaccharidosis and GM2 axonopathies. Paroxysomes are abnormal in adrenoleukodystrophy and Zellweger syndrome. Mitochondria are damaged or faulty in Lays, Mellas, Murphs and some of the glutaric acid areas. Organic and amino acidopathies are associated with Canavans, Alexanders, glutaric acid urea, majority of glutaric acid urea and maple syrup urine disease. And again there are several unclassified ones like Pelagius Mersbacher, Van der Naap, Hypoglycinemia and Kernic Terrace. Unfortunately, all this workup will not be available to us when we actually look at CT or MRI. So our approach to these disorders has to be completely different. So after getting aware of these conditions as pathological and genetic subtypes, we should approach them completely differently. So what information you will have available when you actually scan these patients is only pure clinical findings. So even before we look at imaging, we should be aware whether the condition that the patient is suffering from is progressive, static or intermittently progressive. Ask the pediatrician or pediatric neurologist specific clinical clues like if the child has skin bronzing, if there is a peculiar smell to body secretions, if there is any hypo or hyperpigmentation because that will allow you to look at certain specific clinical conditions which we learn as we go forward. Then when you look at MR, look at whether there is primary white matter affection, primary grey matter affection or affection of both almost equally. Other very important thing that you look for is whether the disease is symmetric or asymmetric because most of the disorders will be symmetric. There are very few which are asymmetric which help you to clinch the diagnosis very easily. This whole exercise is called as pattern recognition and that is what we are going to learn in next half an hour or so. So as I said, even before you look at imaging, check out these questionnaire. What is the age of onset of symptoms? Whether the child is losing milestones at all and if the child is losing milestones or having neuroregression as it is called, whether it is happen happening slowly or rapidly. If there are any other non-CNS symptoms like URTI, that will help you. If patient has presented with spasticity first, think about primary white matter disorders. If the child has presented with seizures first, then look for primary grey matter affection and disorders affecting primarily the grey matter. If fever or upper respiratory tract infection has led to CNS symptoms, think about inherited mitochondrial disorders like Mela's, MRF, etc. So what we have available is what is called as imaging classification put forth by Barkovich which has been modified several times. So I made it very compact and easy to understand. So we look at disorders which initially affect white matter, 
then look at disorders which initially affect gray matter then disorders affecting gray and white matter equally and disorders which primarily involve cerebellum in addition to cerebral white matter so common disorders which affect white matter only to begin with are metachromatic leukodystrophy crabbes adrenal leukodystrophy phenylketonuria and maple syrup urine disease so these begin in periventricular white matter then there are two conditions which begin in subcortical u fibers and then go on to involve periventricular white matter these are pelizias mosbacher and galactosemia then there are disorders which affect gray matter only to begin with and these are pecan or halobudgen patch disease and menkes kinky hair disease or menkes disease as it is now called then there are disorders which affect gray and white matter equally to begin with and these are canavans alexanders mucoparisaccharidosis wilsons or hepatoventricular degeneration and mitochondrial disorders like lays melas mrfs and glutaric aciduria disorders which affect cerebellum to begin with and then involve white matter are cerebellar ataxia and oleopontu cerebellar ataxia syndromes there are four or five subtypes of these so this is the slide we are going to get again and again and again so that we know what we are talking about and we'll see what conditions which have very classic appearance and radiologist can make the difference so we'll start off with five common conditions which affect periventricular white matter to begin with